Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meet the Merchant, episode number 11. I'm Timothy Halloran, a first-time startup founder and college student. Today, we have Jason Cooperberg, the co-founder of Other Side AI, which creates technology to help the world communicate more effectively. First off, who are you, Jason? What is your background? And how did you come up with the idea for Other Side AI? Totally. Thanks so much. Um, so my background is interesting. Uh, I'm originally from upstate New York. I went to college at Syracuse University. Um, I thought I was going to be a doctor. So I was studying bio on a pre-med track, doing research. But I was spending all night in the lab doing research, not out interacting with people and seeing the impact of the work that I was doing. And I was like, about halfway through college, I was like, I kind of want to change things up, see what else is out there. Um, so I kind of did like a, a mini pivot, we'll call it. Um, and I went from just this bio hard sciences to biotech. So all of a sudden I was now taking science, engineering and business. Business is kind of a key one, business classes as well. Uh, and it kind of opened up my world and I started getting more involved with the tech side of things and the startup things. Um, and I especially got involved with the Blackstone Launchpad at Syracuse, which is a community focused on student startups. Uh, so I was working on a startup of my own, um, came time to graduate. Uh, I was super fortunate uh, to uh, get an offer to go to uh, do an, a two-year fellowship at Stanford. Uh, so I did a variety of things while I was there, working with students, uh, really just taking in as much information as possible and as much of that incredible environment, um, continuing to kind of like explore my interest in startups and technology. Um, got to the end of that right as COVID was starting. So it was this weird time. I was like, do I want to go work for someone else? I knew I wanted to start my own company at some point. So I was like, is now the time? Maybe not. Maybe I need want to learn somewhere else. Um, but it kind of sort of, of happened through happenstance that I that we started Other Side. Uh, I was working on a few different side projects, figuring out what it was that I wanted to be my like full focus next. And I linked up with my co-founders, Matt and Miles, uh, who were students at Syracuse at the time. We had a shared mentor. They were involved in the same startup community. Uh, they were working on, on what became Other Side. Uh, and I started working with them casually and it picked up, picked up. We were getting ready. They were getting ready to raise and they were like, should we do this? And I was like, yeah, let's do this. Uh, and, and we ended up raising from investors a little over a year ago. Um, but the idea for, for, for what we're creating is that it is, um, is kind of two parts. One is this AI technology is advancing faster than ever. Like language models are advancing uh, like 10 times per year. So there are companies like OpenAI, AI21, all the other big tech players that are working on these large language models, but they're kind of hidden. Like if you're not an engineer, or you're not technical, it's hard to use them, right? Like if we're scrolling on TikTok, scrolling on Instagram, we know we're interacting with AI, but there's this really powerful language technology that's kind of being hidden. So we we're like, what if we just gave it to everyone and used it to let them communicate better? So we we're like, we can build this into email tools, writing tools. Uh, and that's kind of what we're doing now. We're on a um, few different products. Our main one is this product called HyperWrite, which is this AI writing assistant, which we can talk about a little more uh, later on. Uh, I'm happy to get more into it. But our goal is introduce as many people as possible to this really powerful AI and use it to improve the different aspects of their work and life. Yeah, that's a good, really good way of describing um, other side AI. So, so basically, you have this central mission of you know, helping the world communicate more effectively. And then your first product you're rolling out is HyperWrite. Why did you choose, like, here's a good question here is, yeah. why did you choose HyperWrite to be the first AI product you guys wanted to bring out there? What about that kind of piqued your interest? Totally. So we were originally going to actually work on this email product first, but we ran into a few issues with that. Um, we are kind of found that we were closing ourselves in a little bit. So we got to HyperWrite because we were like, what is something that's kind of like this blank slate that we can just get a lot of people using, see how they're interacting with the technology and then iterate on the product from there. So it started out as this just like no code platform where people could just press a button and get AI to write for them. And we saw how people were using that. We saw students using it. We saw creative writers using it. We saw marketers using it. And that kind of shaped where the product evolved to. Uh, and today we have over 100,000 uh, users who have created accounts and used that product, uh, continuing to grow super quickly. Uh, we just created, uh, built it into a Chrome extension. Uh, so still experimenting with how people are using it, learning from their interactions, what they like and don't like, and learning the best way for them to interact with it. Um, to kind of, as we continue our development. Mm, that's really good. 
when you guys were like creating HyperWrite, were you guys able to do all of this um, AI technology in-house or did you outsource any of the work when you were like creating this product? Totally. So uh, one of the great things is that we partner with a lot of really incredible companies like OpenAI, and we use the technology that they're developing through APIs. Uh, and then we also, um, I think one of the, the best things about our team, um, especially when I look at like myself and my co-founders, Matt and Miles, is that we can just figure out how to get things done. So we were all like semi-technical, I would say, at the start, right? Like we could, we each like had a little bit that we could do. Miles had some experience with design and coding some uh, uh, apps, um, uh, some uh, some iPhone apps. Uh, Matt had some backend experience. I had some front end experience, and we were able to just kind of like put this together with some like honestly no code tools at first because that was the way to get it done fastest uh, and and get an MVP together, send it out to our friends, put it on Twitter, see how people used it. And then it was like, okay, now that we raised a little bit, let's bring on a contractor to get it to the next level. And then once we raised a lot, then it was, okay, let's build a team of people who are experts in this, who are better at the things that we're a little weaker at to, to build the product. Um, so at the start, it really was, what are we good at? And how can we just be scrappy, figure it out using our resources? And then once we were fortunate enough to raise, it was find the people who are the best in the world at this and, and work with them to, to bring it to life. Hmm. That's really good. Yeah, I, I tinkered with the HyperWrite product a little bit. I really like it. I, I personally think it's designed really well. It's very exciting. When you were creating it, were there any companies or previous AI projects that inspired you guys to create this product? Yeah, so um, my co-founder Matt had been working with uh, some of the previous models before that just weren't as powerful. They weren't power, powerful enough to do something, create something like HyperWrite, um, but he had this experience um, he used it to write emails for uh, an earlier uh, company that he was working on. So his experience definitely uh, helped shape the way that we, we thought about working with this AI and designing hyper, right? Um, we also just talk to a lot of people. Like that's the thing I tell people is like, talk to your users, talk to your people, see what their problems are and how you're gonna solve them. Um, when we look at other players in the space, there are some, there are definitely others that are working in this like language AI communication space. Uh, but I think they have a bit of a different focus on it, right? In the short term, there's definitely some overlap with someone like a copy AI, for example, if you're familiar with them. Um, but we're really focused on the long form writing and we're focused on kind of where we're going with this from there, that long term vision, um, continuing to just integrate AI and this powerful technology into different parts of people's lives and uh, into different websites and different uh, places that you're writing and working, for example. Yeah, th that's really cool. So so just somebody that kind of like watching the YouTube channel, like subscribe to my YouTube channel is going to be, yeah. I'm a little confused about, you know, who uses this product, who are kind of like your core customers for HyperWrite? Who would yeah. be the main people that would use this all the time? So there are kind of two ways at looking at this. One is anyone who writes something can use HyperWrite. So we have people using it for everything, but I like to divide them into like three main categories of users. We have students who are using HyperWrite, so for essays and papers to get ideas, when you get writer's block, um, to rephrase things, to make their writing more effective. Um, we have marketers, so people in business who are using it to write copy for websites, for emails, um, for blog posts. Uh, and then the third one is kind of this more like creative, uh, short stories, creative writing, fan fiction. Uh, it's actually really, really good at doing creative writing. Uh, so we found some cool communities. Uh, it's harder to uh, it's harder to monetize those communities, but they love using the AI, and it's really cool to see what it can do for them. Um, so I'd say those are the three main groups of users that we have right now. That's good. That's really good. Can you talk about any other products other say other side AI wants to, you know, go into? Can you talk about kind of like the overall vision for it? Yeah, um, I'll talk about it a little generally and then happy to connect with anyone kind of one on one to, to do demos of what we're working on uh, kind of on a personal basis and, and get some feedback there. But um, our, one of the things we're really interested in is the personalization of this technology, right? How can it understand you, Timothy? Like, how can it look at all your notes and write like you? So that way, when you have to write your next blog post for your startup, how can it take all the information that you've already written and that you already know and help you write something better? So in a really broad sense, that's where we're going next. 
Um, but like I said, uh, got to keep it under wraps a little bit because um, we're, we're looking at raising a little more around some of these ideas. Um, but we do have some, some uh, alpha and beta testers on some of these new products. So happy to uh, hook you up with that later on <laughs> or anyone else who wants to reach out. Yeah, definitely. That sounds really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing like where you guys, you know, can take the next wave of products and everything. Yeah. Um, but just one, one question I have is what is kind of your main sales channel and how do you attract customers and, and how do you connect people with your HyperWrite product? Totally. So I think one of the things is that when people use it for the first time, they're just like, it's like this wow factor, like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know, like, this is like a little scary, a little crazy, like, where is this going to go? Um, so like, when I think about marketing and growth and getting new users, it's how can I give people that feeling? And a lot of times they need to, it really comes across when you're like using the technology for the first time. Uh, but in order to get people to use the technology for the first time, you need to introduce it to them in some other way, right? Um, so a lot of that has been through social, um, things like TikTok and, and Instagram reels actually have been big for us, um, whether that's posting on on my own TikTok, uh, getting friends who have channels to post, um, doing some paid influencer posting, things like that. We've had a few videos with over a million views um, from, from some folks. So it's really just uh, how can we get this like uh, really uh, high energy content showing the power of what we're building and then just get people like intrigued enough to go check it out on their own. And then often once they do, they're like, oh, this is cool. I want to show my friend. Right. And when you when you're showing someone, like I said, when you're experiencing it, it's like a whole different uh, it's a whole different way than just like kind of hearing about it. So definitely encourage everyone to, to try it out for themselves. Yeah, definitely. So like a huge factor is word of mouth and, and that sort of thing. Um, what, one question I have is and this is kind of a challenging one, but are there any competitors in your space? Are there any startups offering similar technology like HyperWrite to, you know, help you write better? Yeah, there, there are certainly a few. Um, I think we, we all take a little bit of a different approach, right? Like I mentioned the copy AI. Um, there's also another one uh, called Jarvis AI. Um, but they have a bit of a different target. They're very focused on this marketing and copywriting, um, which is super valuable. And they have been successful. And there's definitely a little bit of overlap there. But like I said, we're focused on the long form. We're focused on some of this longer term stuff that we're going, through, we're, we're, we're going after, which is how are people going to interact with this technology, not just in one aspect of their life, but in their entire lives. So in the short term, maybe there are some competitors like the ones that I listed um, on, the, on the writing space, but um, we, don't, we don't spend too much time thinking about them because we our time is better spent getting folks using HyperWrite and learning from them, learning how people are using it, and then taking those learnings and putting them into the, the next products that we're working on. That's really good. So one question kind of like on a business standpoint is how do you ultimately plan on turning um, other side AI into this really successful, profitable company? What are kind of like totally. some, some strategies you guys have with that? Yeah, totally. So right now, HyperWrite is free. Like you can go on and use it for free. Uh, and we've experimented with a few different paid plans. Uh, you can pay to upgrade to a more powerful AI that's going to be able to write higher quality, special, especially non uh, nonfiction content, um, just kind of like higher quality writing. Um, but I find that the the base AI is is good enough for most people to get started. Um, you can use code code Jason for your first month of the advanced AI for free if anyone's interested in that, uh, or or reach out to me and, and we can get that set up. Um, so so that's like one like way in the short term. But but like I said, we want to give this to as many people for free as possible, introduce them to it, get them using it, get them learning how to interact with it. And then eventually, once we have them in our ecosystem, we can start selling them more products um, in this space, products that are really going to help the way that they work, right? Students don't have a lot of money to spend on technology, right? And so that's why we're like, we want to give it to them for free. But when they enter the workplace and they can bring this to their company, that's what's really valuable for us. Um, so that's one of the ways. Uh, and there are a few other things relating to some of those other projects that I mentioned um, that we'll be monetizing. Um, but, but we are fortunate to have this, this venture backing, um, which allows us to offer the product for free or very subsidized. Um, so we can kind of optimize for learning and growth at this point. Yeah, I, I think this kind of reminds me of, like, I saw, I think it was like Noah Kagan or something, he had an interview with like the CEO of Strava. And he said initially their their whole goal was because there's this software company, get users first and then kind of turn it into this profitable company in the end. Um, yeah. One Another question I have is like, you've kind of experienced many different challenges while developing this business. 
What would you say has been your biggest challenge so far with other side of AI? What's been a really tough obstacle for you guys? I think one of the hardest, I uh, two things, two things I'll say actually. One of them is hiring. Hiring is hard. There are so many companies out there with a lot of money who are offering a lot of money to engineers. Uh, if you're an engineer, um, or if you're a, if you're a talented engineer, you should have no no difficulty uh, uh, getting a great job at a big tech company or a startup. Um, but we're like competing against these big players, right? Like we had one candidate who was deciding between working for us and Microsoft, uh, and we're waiting to hear back from them, right? Um, so hiring and, and using our network to, to get in touch with folks um, is certainly a big challenge and, and definitely takes up a lot of time. But but when we get the right people, uh, like, like some of the folks on our team now, it definitely is worth the time. It pays off. Um, I think one of the other difficult things is this technology that we're working with. It's so advanced and so new that people are often scared of it or don't, don't understand how it works or are like, it must just be copying things from online. So like, explaining how the technology works or getting people to be comfortable with it is something that I spend a lot of time thinking about, um, which certainly like has a lot of um, overlap in terms of how the product is built, how we're marketing uh, and things like that. So it's really just this like technology adoption problem that, that, that we're trying to solve. Like you, like you think there's a little bit of a learning challenge for somebody to understand this new AI technology. Totally, totally. Like if someone goes on and is just like, I'm going to get it right away. They're probably not. Like it takes a little bit of time. So I often tell people like spend some time just like experimenting, playing around with it, see what you can get it to do. Uh, and that's going to be the best because we're still learning about it. I think that's one of the coolest things is that it's like the limitations are nearly endless and we're still learning about it. And the only way we're going to advance is by with our users, working with our users, seeing how they're using it um, and experimenting with the technology. Hmm. That's really good. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm very excited to see the, what the future holds for other side AI. Um, but yeah. how can people follow your journey and where can people find other side AI and, and use your guys's products? Yeah, totally. So uh, our, our main website is othersideai.com, but Hyperite is that main product right now. Um, HyperiteAI.com, the web app, um, we've had over 100,000 users on that. Um, and then we also recently put out our Chrome extension, which has a couple thousand users. And we're definitely uh, really pushing that right now. So if you use Chrome, you write in Google Docs, definitely check out the Chrome extension. Uh, you can just search for Hyperite online anywhere and you'll find it. Um, we're working on more social stuff like I talked about before. So if anyone wants to help me make TikToks or other marketing materials, always open to connecting and talking about that. Um, I'm working on some of my own TikTok stuff. Um, that's always fun, just kind of a nice creative outlet. Um, we're on Twitter. We're kind of all over. Um, searching my name, searching other sites, searching Hyper, I, you know, you'll definitely find us. Yeah, very cool. I'll definitely check out your socials. Um, but uh, Jason, last but not least, what advice would you give to future entrepreneurs and creatives who want to take on ambitious creative projects? Just go for it. Just go for it. Don't be held back because you don't think you're technical enough. There are no code tools for that or because you don't have a following. There's TikTok for that. You can get hundreds of thousands of views on something without having like any followers, right? Um, you just got to go for it. And if you don't put things out there and see how people react to them, you're not going to be able to improve. So I have a lot of people saying like, I have these great ideas. I want to work on this. I want to do this. And my advice is always get something out there, give it to people, talk to the people, get them using it, see how they're interacting with it. So just go for it. Find like the way that you can just get like some MVP out there or take risks and put content out there. Um, and I guarantee that good things are going to come out of it rather than just like waiting until you feel like you're ready. Yeah, that, that's a terrific last response. I'm very excited for other side AI, Jason. Thank you again for being on the show. Thanks for answering all the questions. Totally. Thank you so much for having me. And anyone, feel free to reach out to me, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, wherever. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you.